the disease that haunts the southwestern region of the U.S., infecting thousands each year. And those who are among the highest at risk? Construction workers. Which is why in October 2019, California became the first state to mandate that construction employees receive Valley Fever Awareness Training. According to the bill, all employees must be provided training once a year, as well as before any employee starts a new job that will likely cause dust disturbance. Arthur & Hansen LLC, a risk management and development group, created this awareness training to help companies meet their training requirements for Assembly Bill 203. This training will cover what valley fever is, how it's contracted, what areas are considered high risk, personal risk factors, methods to prevent exposure, the importance of early detection, reporting symptoms to your employer, as well as common treatments. So what is valley fever? Valley fever, also called coccidiodomycosis, or cochi for short, is a disease caused by the spores of a fungus that can be found in the top 2 to 12 inches of soil in certain areas. But the real question is, how are you exposed? Exposure occurs when the fungus spores become airborne after soil is disturbed, such as from wind, construction, or farming. People breathe in the fungus, which causes an infection in the lungs. The infection can also spread to other organs. These valley fever spores are most prevalent in the southwestern United States, including central and southern California. Exposure to these spores are so widespread in certain counties that they are considered highly endemic. This means that there are more than 20 cases of valley fever for every 100,000 residents per year. These highly endemic counties include Fresno, Kern, Kings, Madera, Merced, Mount Array, San Joaquin, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura. Do you live in one of these counties? If so, this is critical information you need to know. There are three main risk factors that can increase the potential for exposure to valley fever. Dusty work activities, environmental factors, and personal risk factors. Certain dusty work activities put you at higher risk for contracting the disease. Examples include excavation, grading, trenching, pole setting, driving on dirt roads, or operating equipment in fields. On top of dusty work activities, sometimes environmental factors can increase the potential for exposure, such as high winds. For example, a framing crew could be exposed if high winds blow soil from adjacent lots into their work site. Essentially, anyone who has lungs is susceptible to valley fever. But certain people also have additional personal risk factors that can increase their chances of infection. For instance, people who are pregnant or have diabetes are at higher risk. People who have a compromised immune system due to HIV, AIDS, having received an organ transplant, or are taking immunosuppressant drugs are also at higher risk. Now that we've learned what puts you at higher risk for contracting valley fever, let's take a look at how we can prevent exposure. Exposure prevention methods include wetting soil before disturbing it, using good hygiene when skin and clothing is coated with dust, working upwind from dusty areas when feasible, taking breaks in non-dusty locations, using wet methods to clean dusty equipment rather than using compressed air to clean, and wearing a respirator when exposure to dust cannot be avoided. The methods chosen to prevent dust exposure should be based on the specific type of work that your company does. Take some time after this training to discuss the specific control methods implemented by your company to keep you safe. In a minute, we'll discuss the common signs and symptoms of valley fever. Pay close attention because being able to detect these signs and symptoms early is critical to a quick diagnosis. This is because the medication used to treat valley fever is most effective in the early stages of the disease. Common signs and symptoms of valley fever to watch out for include coughing, 
fatigue, fever, shortness of breath, headaches, muscle aches or joint pain, rash on upper body or legs, and symptoms similar to the common cold that linger longer than usual. But how soon do the symptoms appear? Valley fever symptoms may show up between one to three weeks after a person breathes in fungal spores and can last weeks or months. Only 40 to 50% of people actually show symptoms, which is why valley fever can be hard to diagnose. According to the Center for Disease Control, in order to make a diagnosis, your healthcare provider will assess your symptoms, medical and travel history, and conduct image and laboratory tests, such as a blood test, a skin test, or a chest x-ray. If symptoms last longer than the duration of a common cold, seek medical attention and notify your employer. An early diagnosis is critical in order for medical treatment to be most effective. In regards to valley fever treatment, there is no over-the-counter medication. Doctors must prescribe three to six months of antifungal medication. For severe cases, lifelong antifungal medication may be necessary. While most people will have minor symptoms, valley fever can be severe, even deadly for others. The number of people contracting this disease is growing at an alarming rate. Early detection is key and this is especially true for those working in construction in high endemic counties. Don't let dirt cause this dangerous diagnosis. If you have questions or concerns about Valley Fever Awareness Training or the safety of construction workers, contact us on our website. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more information on safety and risk management. You can also find us on YouTube at Arthur & Hansen, LLC.